Welcome to Art Discourse. Today we are going to be thinking about something and then talking about that something. Yeah, and we that are. something is going to be this question that I'm going to pull out of this box. Wait, for those that are new, in this series Kyle and I answer questions that have been submitted to us over the years from artists um, with questions about being artists. And we answer them on the spot. None of them are read in advance. Uh, so we just answer them in the first way that we think about it. We give ourselves about 15 minutes. So here we go. What practical advice do you have for managing the business slash marketing aspects of an art practice for someone starting out? What are good habits to develop early on? So that's like three questions. Two, I think. Technically. Okay. Good habits. So what practical advice do you have for managing a business and marketing aspects of an art practice for somebody starting out? Okay, so I so advice for managing a business, an art business, and then marketing that, and then good habits. Okay, so let's start with... Uh, it's me again. Okay, so what advice do I have about managing your art business? I would say starting out something that I definitely did not put a lot of stock in and regret a lot is keeping files organized. It, that sounds very lame, but I would say that, that there are still files from like 2010 that I'm like Tr like continuously forgetting to organize and every once in a while when I stumble into them I'm like oh my gosh this is a really good picture of this show and it I then I forget because I still forget to organize it and that is regrettable I regret that at this point it's been 10 years and we have an obscene amount of like photos and documentation things like that and so managing that file component of all of this and like you know I don't know how many folders we have that are just like iPhone dump June 2020 <laughs> and like there's just so many and I would say like the best thing that you can do is like try to stay on top of it yeah. and follow through so like if you're like shooting photos for a project you're working on or let me use this as an example like when we we're doing this show we will end this today and then we will put everything onto the hard drive into its folder and so just like kind of closing out the day's worth of like social media and like that kind of practice by organizing it in terms of like years i think years are a great way to start so i would say yeah organizing and then also actually documenting there have been exhibitions or events that we've done where we've just been so busy, like either leading up to it or during yeah. it, that we just didn't think about taking any footage. And I regret, regret it so much. Or not reaching out to the organization. We were part of a performance in our undergrad that like recently got brought up, like where we were asked about it. And I don't ha I think I have maybe three photos of that whole performance, but I know that there probably is like footage of it. It's, it's most likely cringy and I don't want to see it at all. But you know, there are events that we've done that I, we just didn't have the foresight to make sure that we captured them and that yeah. that's a bummer. So like staying on top of that is like really important. And like part of that is also like just managing like your files and your like artwork files. Like, yeah. I would say like a really good habit to develop early on is like making sure that like when you are like making an artwork that the artwork is done you photograph that artwork or if you have that luxury of being having access to the equipment otherwise do it in batches I guess and hire somebody yeah but like just having all those files like properly formatted ready to go will make everything easier in life later yeah and having a, like a a file system that is um, not just IMG underscore 4029, 
But okay, no, whatever the... that you have to like rename all the files though, right? <laughs> Just the folders. I guess, but I think if you're like taking pictures of work that you're going to submit to things right away, putting in the name of the work and the size of it and what it is, just like as soon as you put it into the folder and it's edited, it's going Got to it. save you time. It definitely will. Yeah. Like I think that that's like a really strong habit to develop really, really early on. Yeah. And it will make things easier when you're applying to things and you're trying to get the rest of the machine running. And then I think other things like keeping records of like how much you've charged for all of your work. So you have all of your image files, but we also have an Excel spreadsheet of all the work that we have and um, the size, blah, 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 all yeah. of the, you know, nitty gritty of it, but then also the price of it. And that just keeps getting added to. So then we can see like how have our prices changed over the years? What does really well? What do we show more of? Um, and then we also keep files of all of the grants that we've applied for, all of the commissioned work we've done, all of the workshops we've done, and the prices associated with those, so that there's consistency there and we understand like how we're managing those um, fees, because that can get really murky and confusing. Not only that, but like it, by being able to reference those things, you can build other applications faster. Mm -hmm. And you can do other work faster because you have examples to pillage from. And I think that's something we do often when we're making proposals for different projects. We will take the InDesign document from the previous one, change the colors to it, and then move forward with it. Um, I think that that's like something that's very, very valuable to our work process. Yeah. So that when we are making applications, we're not always starting from ground zero, but we have a framework to build upon. And we have a, a whole episode that talks about applications and how we like set ourselves up for success with that. So I'll make sure to link that um, in this video so that you can take a look at that because that I think has a lot of good answers to this particular question. I think like one of the bigger habits that I would encourage a young artist is to set regular studio hours and hold yourself accountable for those and getting into that rhythm of creating regularly. And I think like transitioning out of university, uh, what ended up happening to me is that I made some art but not very much and I kind of like moved away from this really intensive like every day we're in the studio for hours to like kind of a couple hours here and there. And I think that like that was a big detriment to my growth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so it would say that give time to your practice because it is important and start that now so that you are just creating things and moving forward with it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think also um, if there's someone in your life that can be kind of your like a accountability monitor, that can be really helpful. Like obviously Kyle and I can hold each other accountable and can get on each other's case because it has to be someone who when they're bugging you or like, you know, like this happens a lot where like, I know I haven't been in the studio for a week and I'm already like beating myself up internally about it. Uh, Kyle can still say, hey, so like, do you just not care about painting anymore? Or what's going on with that? Because you haven't been in the studio. And like, I don't say that. he doesn't say that, but he can be like, uh, you know, get, you haven't been working in the studio, what's going on? And I can be a little bit annoyed at him for saying that to me, but also Ultimately. know that I haven't been in the studio yeah. and he has, he's in his right to say like, I've been, you know, you have made me your accountability monitor and I'm, I'm doing my job. And so what's the deal? I think a good thing to give yourself, like if we consider it from like the bit, there's a business part, there's a marketing part, and there's like kind of general good habits between the two of those things. That like as like, as an artist, like really consider what your goals are within your own career and setting those out. Like if your intention is to make your soul income through your art, or your intention is to make art on the side on the weekends when you're working a full-time job, like understanding what you want from your practice, I think is a good thing to do at the beginning and then trying to create a framework that will hopefully encourage that. And part of that, I think that is if you are wanting to be a full-time artist, that you do need to, I guess, educate yourself a bit about how a business operates and how a like, cash flow works and how you are going to translate what you create 
into something that creates a monetary value that you can, I guess, reliably, it's never reliable, let's be real. It's never a reliable source of income, but like you got to like start to learn how to translate what you do into money. Yeah. Which is like a really kind of like, not necessarily the most, I feel like a lot of people don't like that statement. It's true. I think it depends on what field you're in. I feel like musicians are a lot better at like understanding and valuing the worth of what they make and yep. saying like, this is how much a show costs. This is how much a tour costs. This is how much we need to charge and just like sticking to their guns about that. I, you know, I feel like writers, when they're writing for a publication, they know this publication is going to pay me X number of dollars or cents per words. And they're only ever going to, you know, publish X number of words. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of what I can bank on there. Uh, so, you know, again, like we, I feel like we repeat ourselves a lot, but you really do want to do the research on what you're doing. So, and sometimes it's hard to discuss these things from such a broad scope, because if we're thinking about, you know, marketing, say how you're going to market yourself, um, as a visual artist is going to be different than how you market yourself as a writer. Maybe as a writer being on Twitter is the best place to invest a lot of your time. And so you kind of have to see like where, you can, you know, try things out, give everything a bit of a go, but where is the audience for what you're making? And, you know, Kyla and I have tried it all. We've, we've done Pinterest, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I technically have a TikTok account that I never use. You know, we're making YouTube videos now. I have a Twitch page, like literally, like if it's new and it's there, we are on it and we're checking it out. And you have to gauge, A, what's your capacity? I think that is a huge one and probably is a word that I wouldn't have used early on in our career. But understanding yeah. capacity is massive and because that's going to answer a lot of things like what's your emotional capacity, what's your financial capacity, what's your time capacity. Yeah. and and then devote where you can to those different spaces. So for us, Instagram is the best place for, you know, engagement in terms of marketing. And so we invest a lot of time there. That's like, that's kind of the place that I look at the most. It's the place that we build the biggest community and we put a lot of stock into. Doesn't mean we don't participate in the other spaces because we, ne we definitely do, but, um, you know, we, we're only two people, so the capacity is small. And making these YouTube videos is something we enjoy. It feels creatively very fun for us to do. We're both like fascinated by yep. film. And, uh, and so, you know, it might not be our biggest audience, but it's one that we, it fills us up. So we put the capacity time into that because it's our interest. Yeah, I think that's a great advice. Capacity is so important. It is, yeah. And really thinking about that and thinking about it in like a real sense because it's not, it's like, it's not just about your art practice. It's also you have to live, you have to maintain friendships, you have to do all of the other stuff that goes on in the world. And so I think like giving yourself some time to kind of map that all out and kind of understand like, I guess have a dialogue with yourself as you map it out, like looking at it and looking at the data and seeing how it's speaking to you like if it's telling you like you just don't have enough time to work in the week you might have to figure out how to arrange your life to allow that to happen yeah and like there's lots of business guides out there that talk about um what is it called off what when you give work to other people offload Outsource. Outsource. Outsourcing. And, you know, depending on what your career is and what kind of work you're making, oh, man. you know, getting an agent might be an actual possibility for you. And that could be a really good way to, like, outsource some of the different roles that you have to play as a creative person. Um, yeah. Having a manager, you know, hiring someone to, you know, we... We've done installations where we have hired assistants because it, the, the capacity isn't there. We can't make a thousand of whatever it no. is we need to make all by ourselves in the time frame allotted. So 
you know, I would say also thinking about that as a possibility for certain elements of what you're doing. Um, and even if early on you're like not ready, not ready for that, but knowing what ready could look like, getting yourself set up for that mm -hmm. is, is a great way. I think trying to look ahead is very helpful, even if you know in that moment that's not the right moment for you planning for the potential for that moment later on can be being nice asset. Well, that's it for us today. We'll Within catch you all, minutes. all on the next art discourse. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, could you do two things for me? Could you like it? And could you subscribe to our channel? Both of these things help us out tremendously. A big shout out to all of our patrons. Your continued support is amazing and we really appreciate the encouragement to continue making these videos. If you want to become a patron, you can see the link below in the description.